Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Good. Uh, well, uh, I'm Frank. Uh, I'll be chairing the Tuesday, January 12th, 2021 meeting of the Yellow Springs Planning Commission. I want to welcome everybody whose faces I can see and even, and even welcome those people whose faces I can't see. So, uh, all right. Uh, we'll, uh, I guess, uh, call the roll, please. I guess uh, it's Brianne calling the roll. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Doden. Here. Curlis. Yes. Pallotta. Yeah. Green. Yes. Almond. Here. Styles. Here. Kirk. All right. Attendance is Thanks. vacant. All right. Uh, one of my first things here is I'll just uh, review tonight's agenda real quickly. Uh, first thing uh, is we will have a review of the minutes of our last meeting, which was on November 10th, 2020. Then uh, we'll talk about uh, communications that have come in. Uh, then we'll move on to a council report. Laura, are you gonna have a council report tonight? I don't think so, but okay. let me give it, if I think of it, I'll give you, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, and then there will be a period for citizen comments for items that are not on tonight's agenda. Uh, following that, we'll move on to, uh, we have four public hearings tonight, all uh, conditional use applications. The first is uh, by James Luckett and Tanya Moss for a home occupation permit for the bakery business. The second is Alex Melamed, uh, third for uh, a transient guest lodge establishment. Third is uh, Gavin Leonard, is for an accessory dwelling unit. And the fourth is a conditional use application. Ted Dunnell, I believe, will be speaking on behalf of uh, Rob Hope and others for a conditional use for a bakery at 305 North Walnut Street. And uh, since I'm one of the people who's probably going to be one of the partners in the bakery, I will have to recuse myself for that. So I'm not sure, Brianne, you'll have to tell me what the correct procedure will be for how to recuse myself on a Zoom meeting. Uh, you just did. <laughs> okay. So I don't have to like go outside or anything. I can just, okay, all right. You can just, you can just sit here as long as you don't participate in the discussion. Okay, I can I can do that. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, and after that, we have a little bit of old business, uh, new business regarding the Home Inc.'s letter to for a one-year extension for completion of the pocket neighborhood development, uh, agenda planning, and then adjournment. So hopefully, we'll be able to proceed apace. So uh, first item of business is to review the minutes for our meeting, which was our last meeting on November 10th, 2020. And so I'll just go through it uh, one page at a time for members of the Planning Commission. And uh, if anybody has any changes or corrections that need to be made, uh, you know, uh, chime in or raise your hand uh, virtually or uh, however, whatever it takes to get our attention. And so any changes or corrections on page one? Uh, page two. Page three. Page four. And I believe that's it. All right, so I'll move that we accept the minutes uh, as written for, two, uh, for the Tuesday, November 10th, 2020 meeting. Second. I could, uh, would you call the roll, please? Doden. Yes. Curlis. Yes. Green. Yes. Uh, Almond. Yes. Styles. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, communications. We have received uh, way too many letters to go through them, each in uh, detail this week. Uh, by and large, from what I can tell, uh, pretty much all were regarding the uh, Blue House Bakery. Is that correct, Raven? 
Um, there is one I've, uh, in support of the um, accessory dwelling unit <coughs> on Limestone Street, I believe. Oh, okay. Two. There are two from uh, Lisa Varandani and Janet Mueller supporting uh, 143 East Limestone. The rest okay. are for 422 North High. Okay. Yes. And those will all be included in the official record, right? Yeah, yes. but uh, way, way too many to uh, go into detail on all of them. Dozens and dozens of letters, I believe all in support uh, of, of uh, various uh, conditional use applications. So uh, any other communications? That's pretty much it, right? Okay. All right. Uh, council report, Laura, did you have anything? Yeah, so there's no legislation, but I will draw the public's attention to the last council meeting of the year, which was uh, on 1221. Uh, the planning commission's year end report is in that packet. So if people want to read it, that's where they can find it. Uh, Josue, did you have anything from council that you, or uh, village manager's office that you want to, I'm not sure. If Josue is here, or can hear me or not? But. He's here, but uh, Josue, okay. you're you're muted. I think maybe. I don't, I don't think know. his microphone's working. He said he was having okay. a good day. Okay, well, we'll just uh, go on then to the next item, which is the time for citizens' comments for items that are not on tonight's agenda. Uh, so uh, I will open the floor. Uh, if you're a citizen out there in the virtual meeting world, uh, who would like to make a comment about something that is, uh, should become before planning commission, but is not on tonight's agenda. Uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and chime in, uh, or you can go in the upper right-hand corner of your screen and virtually raise your hand. And I'll give you a few seconds to see if anybody wants to say anything. And we can all stare at each other in the meantime. <laughs> Okay, not hearing anything. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close the period for citizen comments and move on to the first of the public hearings. Um, okay. Can I this just be, interject oh, I'm something? I'm sorry yes. first. Um, I wanted to uh, add, I, I missed that on review of agenda. Um, I thought that maybe it would go under council reports. Maybe it shouldn't just go under um, at the end. Uh, a, uh, an update just on the parking minimums that you that oh, okay. the commission had recommended for maybe council. we could do that under old business <clears throat> okay <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry and then also um i did want to mention that um council did um uh vote in uh matthew kirk who's here um as okay. an alternate and okay. right off the bat he's getting to serve in that <laughs> capacity tonight. So thank you, Matthew. Well, welcome, Matthew. Okay, uh, all right. Go okay. Ahead. All right, so the uh, first uh, public hearing is a conditional use application uh, by James Luckett and Tanya Moss for a home occupation permit for their bakery business at 422 North High Street. So uh, Denise, would you like to uh, give us the staff report on that, please? Certainly. Um, so um, staff recently became aware of Mr. Luckett's bakery business. Um, we contacted him for a home occupation permit. Um, he does have visitors that come to the home, so that requires a conditional use hearing. Um, and as you can see from the letters of support, um, that people do not have an issue with his business. Um, there have not been any complaints filed. Um, in the zoning office for his business. Um, and he does tend to keep it as uh, contact free as possible. Um, and uh, although there are a number of people that come at one time, um, staff in, in hearing from Mr. Luckett um, has, um, is of the opinion that um, traffic has not been a problem uh, at this point. Obviously, um, if, if it does become a problem, down the road, then, you know, we would contact him about, you know, an alternate plan, you know, maybe he'll have to start doing more deliveries or hire somebody to do deliveries, but that's a positive problem. You know, it shows your business is growing. Um, but for right now, um, staff recommends approval uh, of this home occupation. Um, 
with just the reminder that um, the applicant will keep a log of those visits because he is at a maximum number of visits. All right, uh, any uh, questions or concerns by any members of the planning commission? Well, I got a tape. Everything seems pretty straightforward. Uh, Tanya and James, would you like to say anything or? Um, no. <laughs> Don't have to. <laughs> no, we're, we're really happy it's approved. We, you know, we, we love the community on North I and we don't want to disturb anybody, but it seems like it's been pretty seamless so far, so. Okay, unless uh, any members of the Planning Commission have any questions or concerns, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open the public hearing uh, for the application. And once again, if, any, if there's anybody out there who wants to uh, speak about this application for a conditional use, uh, either unmute yourself or wait, raise your hand virtually I'll give everybody a few seconds uh, to opportunity to chime in. Okay. Not hearing anything, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the Planning Commission. Uh, I would go ahead at this point, since nobody seems to have any concerns about this application, make a motion that we approve the conditional use application with the condition that uh, they keep a, a log of visits to the site. I second that. Okay, uh, would you uh, call the roll please? Okay, just for clarification, um, Susan will be subbing for Dino tonight and uh, Matthew, you'll be subbing for Laura on item four. Um, just that's based on the order you popped into the Zoom call. So, uh, Doden. Yes. Curlis. Yes. Green. Yes. Almond. Yes. Styles. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, uh, Tanya and James. And congratulations. And keep up the good baking. <laughs> thank you all very much. Okay, we'll now move on to the second conditional use application, <clears throat> Alex Malamed. Uh, a conditional use application for transient guest lodge establishment at 205 North Walnut Street. Uh, Denise, would you like to talk about this, please? Yeah, so um, I you probably recall that um, uh, this uh, property came into uh, planning, before planning commission, I believe it was in November, um, for a um, uh, transit guest lodging establishment at their primary dwelling. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're on the wrong one. The wrong one. <laughs> the wrong one. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so this is Alex's house. Oh my gosh, right. Alex, you're involved in multiple applications tonight. Um, <clears throat> this is a transit guest lodging um, and an accessory dwelling unit that's at the back of um, Alex's primary dwelling. Um, he would like to. Um, make this a transit guest lodging establishment. Um, he meets the requirements of the code except for, um, he doesn't have any off street parking. Um, <clears throat> so there is um, parking he said that is available. Um, if necessary, he said he could also um, check with um, the business owner of the property at the rear to see if you might be able to use a parking space there. But that might be a question you might want to ask him. Um, he um, is aware that any, um, he, he's not gonna be, he's not separately metered. He reads, meets all the other requirements for this. Um, and staff doesn't have any issue with it um, if the planning commission doesn't. He will also need to get an inspection done, Miami Township, right. fire and rescue. Okay, uh, members of the Planning Commission, uh, any questions or concerns? What about the parking situation? Uh, Denise, uh, there is no on-street parking on Cliff, is that correct? 
There, no, there is, there's on street parking on cliff. I on bo so. both sides? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. On the north I side. I don't know about that on the north side, if there is. There definitely is on the south side, but I'm not, actually, we should ask Alex that. I, I don't yeah, know there's, that. There's a couple spaces um, to the west of the Bushworks. Is there? Um, mm. Yeah, it's more comfortable with one, but uh, usually there's a, a car park there from, you know, across the street or extra people at, at Bushworks or something. Raven, do you have an aerial of that? Yeah. I, I guess my question oh, yeah. is, I mean, do we have a lot of residents who are forced to use on street parking as their full time parking or I mean, my recollection is generally in the Walnut Street yeah. area, there's parking. Well, I will say the house right at the corner. Yeah, sorry, this is Matthew speaking. I do know that the house at the corner of Cliff and Walnut is a double that does not have any off street parking. So I think people are parking uh, on street associated with that property that's right next door. But yeah, the, Laura, there is um, mostly on street parking on North Walnut and, and it is, um, there is an area for them to pull off um, to, to park, but it is still in the right of way. Right. So also, uh, Alex, in the thing that you had written about this, you said, so you say that the parking is on Cliff Street. Would the people be walking through that, the lot next to yours to get to it? Or are you thinking people are gonna walk around and do your, do your neighbors have any objection if there are gonna be people walking through their yard? Uh, I've never had an objection. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, the, the, the gravel drive in Bushworks is functions like an alleyway back there. Um, so that's, that's the way people would walk to the, to your, your structure back there is up through there and then over. Probably the easiest, it's the easiest way. And going up and around Walnut street is kind of a long walk. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, yeah. it's just grass back there. Uh, okay. pretty commonly, you know, lots of cats and people walking across it in general. Where, where is the entry door for the uh, for the uh, transient lodge? It's uh, sort of the southwest corner. Okay. Where you would expect it. Okay. Huh? Have you have you talked to the owner of the yeah. Bushworks about an easement through their property to access that, or about parking or anything? Uh, John is pretty cool on an easement, um, and there's generally, there's, there's always been enough parking, um, on Cliff Street, but when the Green Generation Office was in that tiny house, um, we'd often, you know, temporarily park back there, and it was rarely an issue unless it was a big truck. Um, staff hasn't did not staff did um, send out letters to all the surrounding property owners and we didn't receive any comments back. Okay. I, I will add if if people wanted to park on Walnut Street and take the path back, that would be pretty easy. And there's usually a spot or two right in front of the house available. Right. Which which side of your house does the path go on? South. South side. And that's the shorter way. It's not really direct. Um, any other questions or concerns, members of the Planning Commission, before I open the public hearing? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open a public hearing on this application. And again, if anybody uh, out there, members of the public, would like to comment on this application for the conditional use, uh, please unmute yourself and join in or uh, go in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, I believe, and hit the waving button. And I'll give you people a few seconds to join us.
not hearing any anybody wanting to join in. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close the public hearing and bring it back to the Planning Commission. Uh, so Planning Commission, any thoughts on this? Is uh, parking a concern? It doesn't sound to me like it's uh, like it's a, like it would be a problem for off street parking. Probably not, but it'd probably be, I think you'd have to allow for at least two cars since you're allowed to have two adults there and you have to assume maybe two people travel and meet there. Um, and how do you feel about including something where they go through another adjacent property? That to me feels like I prefer for it to be written up where they just access it all directly through the property owner's property. Yeah, I agree. It's a bit cleaner if, you know, if it's written up and if he wants to make an agreement with other property owners at another time, we've at least approved it where it's not uh, invading on other people's property. Seems to make sense to me. How many additional parking spaces are required? One? One. 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 So you only need one. Okay. And okay. we're saying that you can, they're on the street, so that's accessible. I guess I, I would not feel- you know, The requirement is one off, one additional off street, but he doesn't have that. So it would still be, it would be on street, but there is, he said a little bit, and you can kind of see it on the aerial. There's a couple of gravel spaces there. But I think what they're suggesting is to, access from the front and park in the front on on north walnut park on walnut yeah. yeah i don't think we can count parking spaces that are on someone else's private property right regardless of how cool they are because right. if they sell the property tomorrow then who knows what the situation becomes right yeah as far as the the current bushworks property right 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 yeah. um i have a out of curiosity question uh, for Alex, which is whether or not he considered uh, utilizing the property as a long-term rental. Uh, certainly it would be a nice little spot. I've lived there for three years, um, but it's very small. It's a studio with a, a wall bed right now. So uh, I don't know who's gonna wanna live there long-term. Other than you. Other than me. <laughs> <laughs> <My cat. laughs> well, I, right. thought I, I thought I heard Sarah start to make a motion. Okay. I need a point of clarification real quick, Brian, mm -hmm. because I, I, I appreciate Matthew's um, uh, responses in here and re the questions he's raising, uh, which is, I'm sure is okay, but can he vote when we have Susan or is that Okay, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be calling on him for a vote, but I mean, he is an alternate, so he's entitled to, you know, make his comments and then join in the discussion as a member of the planning commission. Okay. So, even though he doesn't have a vote on it when I call the vote. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, uh, was somebody going to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. It's the motion to approve on the condition that the parking is on Walnut Street and the access through the applicant's property. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. thank you. I'll second that motion. Okay. All right, it's been, and do we also want to include uh, the condition that the applicant has a reinspection? Uh, he's going to have to have that. Don't worry. I, I wouldn't. Okay. So we don't have to worry about that. It's a, it's a, it's a requirement of the, for an okay. order to give them the permit. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. All right. Uh, would you call the rule, please? Doden. Yes. Curlis. Yes. Green. Yes. Almond. Yes. Styles. Susan, you're muted. Susan? Susan? Sorry, You're Susan. Muted. You earlier, because you were having feedback, there was an echo. 
uh, of everyone else talking on your computer. So you just have to unmute. Mm. I I was on mute. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. So you're, okay. Yes. Okay. You're voting yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Okay. And congratulations. And we will move on to oh, move on to the uh, third conditional use application. Uh, Gavin Leonard, conditional use application for an accessory dwelling unit at 143 East Limestone Street. Um, okay. Now, Denise, you can tell us about <laughs> so this. this. Is a, <laughs> yeah, so this is another one that Alex is involved in. Um, and uh, as you recall, Gavin came before the Planning Commission for a transit guest lodging for his primary dwelling. Um, he's since decided that he wants to um, remodel uh, his um, uh, barn structure that's at the back of his property. And Raven, you can probably show that. Um, Ariel, and he um, is, uh, he meets, again, he meets the qualifications. He does not have an issue with parking. The, the only issue with his uh, accessory dwelling is that it would um, be larger than what the zoning code allows. Um, this would be, I mean, 800 square feet is the maximum that he can have it and, um, this uh, would be 957 square feet, uh, somewhere between 957 and, and 973, which I have to work out with Alex uh, bef if you approve it before he goes to BZA. But he would have to ask if you approve this accessory dwelling unit, um, which he would then use that um, for a transit guest lodging uh, that he would, the condition would be that he has to go to BZA for a variance. Or no, since we already talked, uh, I'm sorry, Denise, were you finished with your report? Yes. Now, will he have to come? Because uh, he, he came before us before for transient guest lodge for his regular residence, right? Right, so he, he does not. I mean, there's nothing in the code that that it's it's by the property. It doesn't stipulate okay. that. So um, since he already has, and I'm making you aware of the fact that he would be um, using this for transient guest lodging as the primary use as transient guest lodging, he said, you know, there may be an occasion where he would possibly rent out uh, both if there was a special event in town or something. But there there is at least one other um, property in town that has done that as well. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't have to come back for a second hearing for to be transient guest lodge. No. Okay. He's already got approval. Okay, do any members of the planning commission have any questions or concerns here? And just to clarify, Denise, it's it's uh the size it is because it's in an existing structure. Yeah, that's the I'm sorry. Yeah, that is the issue. That this this barn structure. Um, I mean, obviously he could do things to make it smaller, but um, uh, you know, we, he he is um in a barn. It, it's it's in a barn structure that was built in like the 1900s, and so um, it's non-conforming to our code now, but he's not really bumping anything. He's not, he's not making the nonconformity larger other than, other than he's putting an awning over a existing porch area. He's just doing an internal remodel. Yeah. Do you know what the reason for the 800 square foot limit is? I, I, I wasn't around when, when the 2013 code, um, was written and maybe even Laura could shed some light on that. But I think that what has what I have seen around town is, is there have been cases where people have built their accessory structures and they're actually larger than their house. Okay. Um, and I think that might be one of the reasons why they decided to sure. 66% of the um, primary up to 800 square feet, whichever is less. But you know, when you have larger properties, um, I know we the, the Board of Zoning Appeals did allow 
um, the planning commission did allow uh, uh, as well the the approval of an accessory dwelling unit um, over on Allen Street because that was this huge over an acre property and they just wanted it to be slightly larger. Sure. But again, this isn't gonna be in an existing structure that's been there for a very long time. Right. But was there any conversation when, cause we recently just kind of uh, enhanced our accessory dwelling laws, correct? To uh, try to encourage people to bring more ADUs online to help with our housing shortage. Is that accurate? That, well, that, that right. was, in, but that was in 2013 with the, with, the, and, and, and I, I believe that the, the thrust behind that was, was the fact that it was becoming more expensive to live here and the, 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 the village administration and um, council did not want to see people being pushed out of their homes. And this was one way that people could make a little bit of money to offset the the cost of living here. And so the transit guest lodgings units um, or the accessory dwelling units rather can either be inside your primary dwelling or they can be in an accessory structure. Either way, they're called an accessory dwelling unit, but they, they require a conditional use hearing. And now the transit guest lodging portion of that has only been in existence since uh, 2018. Right. Right. And do any members, any other members of planning commission have any questions or concerns at this point? Um, all right, well then I will go ahead and uh, open the public hearing on the uh, application for conditional uh, use application for accessory dwelling unit at 143 East Limestone Street. So if anybody out there would like to comment on this, uh, please unmute yourself or virtually raise your hand. I'll give people a few minutes to chime in. Not a few minutes, a few seconds. Okay, not hearing anything. So I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And I believe, uh, did you say Raven, that you did receive a couple of letters in support of this as well? Is that right? Yes, um, both from people that are local, but I don't believe they were immediate neighbors. Okay. Yeah. Right, do uh, members of the Planning Commission have any uh, uh, further questions or concerns or any questions for Mr. D uh, Mr. Leonard? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to accept right. to approve this application with the conditions recommended by staff. The applicant must obtain a variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals that the uh, MTFR will reinspect the ADU prior to use as a transit guest lodging and that the applicant must combine all income earned from the short-term rental of both the ADU and the principal dwelling on the same lodging tax return, which is due twice a year at the end of January and July. Thank you, I'll second that. Uh, would you uh, call the roll please? Doden. Yes. Curlis. Yes. Green. Yes. Almond. Yes. Styles. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. All right, now, okay, now we're gonna move on to the next conditional use application. Uh, and I believe, uh, Ted, is that correct? You're gonna be speaking about this? And it's uh, yep. on behalf of Rob Hoke and others for Yellow Springs Baking Company. Uh, for a bakery at 305 North Walnut. And on this one, since I'm one of the three people involved, I will be recusing myself. I will just go on mute. And who's uh, Judy called me. I, I am. Okay. So and we're going to open the hearing on the conditional I use for uh, 305 North Walnut Building A for Yellow Springs Baking Company. Okay. Um, Denise, do you have the staff report? Yeah, and can I, your hand can I, I need to interrupt, 
please. Uh, I need to recuse myself as well. I represent one of the owners of Mills Works on another matter, but I'm gonna recuse myself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I uh, will continue on then with the staff report. Um, so, um, you know, I think most everyone is aware of the Mill Works property. Uh, you know, recently, um, this past uh, year, we uh, in 2020 had approved Tuck and Red's Distillery, which um, happens to be located uh, in uh, C two, three, well, actually C one, three area over there near this one. This this property, this particular area of Millworks used to be, I believe, the location of a S and D distillery. But the entrance for it is going to be um, over along the um, western side, um, and then it will just take in the area of that's outlined in red. This is going to be a wholesale baking operation. Um, it'll be a, a no retail sales um, at this location. Um, it's there'll be a small area where people will pick up their orders. Um, they'll have already paid for their orders online um, and uh, they're just be there to pick it up. There's also will be a small office, um, as you can see out there, receiving and pick up the office area and the work production area. This meets the requirements for um, the I-1 mixed use industrial, although the zoning for that overlay for that zoning um, currently says planned unit development. Um, that property did not come back for a final uh, on the PUD. Um, uh, council was okay about not sending it back um, for rezoning to I-1, but staff is required to only follow the I-1 mixed use. And um, a, a, there are several pot potential categories that this could fall under. Um, uh, we have the area where they're picking up the product, which you could call retail, is definitely less than 30% of the production of the goods on, on the premises. There's also the fact that it is a food production uh, property. Um, there's several uh, areas it could fall under that I that I put into the um, into my staff report. Um, and it's also food, agriculture and food. So um, it meets all of the criteria. Um, I don't feel that there is a concern about parking. It's going to be just in a parking primarily for the employees and maybe a, a couple spaces for people coming to pick up the product and then they would be leaving right away because there isn't any sit down um, area to eat the goods uh, baked there on the premises. So staff has no issue with this <clears throat> either. Hey, Denise, I've got a couple questions. Yes. Um, one is, uh, with Enviro, is EnviroFlight still at that pre? My understanding was I thought their lease was going to be up sometime soon. Um, uh, EnviroFlight is still there. They're in um, A1 through A8 of that property. Okay. I have information on that, Kurt, if you need me to weigh in. Okay. I was just curious because that's, that's the only parking that I know usually that's uh, a parking need up in that area of the uh, of millworks during the daytime hours. Um, and then I guess my other question was when you say people are going to be coming to pick it up, um, are we talking more like wholesale customers, like somebody from a restaurant or a coffee shop, or are we talking like somebody got two croissants and is coming to pick it up? Um, I think it probably could be both, but I would have to ask the um, the applicants so we can go ahead. Um, Ted, did you want to talk uh, or speak for the applicant? I can and answer that. Wait, but, but before that, do, Hosea, did you want to talk about EnviroFlight? And I have received word that EnviroFlight has extended their lease through 2022. <laughs> the initially the lease was uh, set to expire in 2021, but they've extended it to one more year. Okay. Cool. And the, the reason I, I more context to this is that um, on a separate matter, we've been 
working with EnviroFlight to retain their business in the village. Uh, so no decision has been made on on the proposal that we submitted to them. Do you know, Josue, if there, um, if the number of employees uh, uh, in that area, which is more their office location, I think, rather than where they, I think they're, uh, I could be wrong on that, but I believe they use some other buildings like G1, F1, maybe, let me see. Correct. I don't know the details of the personnel. Yeah. I know that the team that has remained on site is the research and development while production has moved to Kentucky. Okay. And They're maybe, mostly all parked in the area, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah, maybe the applicant can just speak to that. I can speak to that. Um, the the space that is being uh, proposed here for this wholesale uh, food service business is taking over a portion of the S and G space, um, and the parking that was dedicated for the S and G space access that was given to the S and G space are identical to what they are here. Uh, there are no additional employees compared to the two uses, so the parking requirements wouldn't change between those two entities. Um, folks that come into the wholesale business are there to pick up quantities of goods that are being uh, prepared for something like a banquet or a wedding or whatever venue that they might have, but it's not a one-on-one -on -one meal to a client type of business. This is a wholesale business, and it will always be a wholesale business. Okay, thanks, Ted. Does anyone uh, of the Planning and Zoning Commission have any questions for the for Ted, for the applicant? I do. Uh, Ted, are you saying this is wholesale, not retail? Correct. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, let's go ahead and open the public hearing. Um, please make sure you state your name and your address. We have anyone who would like to speak um, concerning this conditional use. Okay, well, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Um, is there any additional questions from planning and zoning or comments from planning and zoning commission? before I hear a motion. Okay, would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, well, I'll second. <laughs> You'll second, okay. Roll call, please. Green. Yes. Almond. Yes. Styles. Yes. Kirk. Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, right. I think you can take back over now. Thank you, everybody. Hey, tell Carrie I said hi. I will. Okay, thank you very much. Everybody hear me again? Yep. Okay, so that completes all the conditional use uh, and all the public hearings. So now we can uh, move on to a couple items as it turns out for all business. First of all, uh, the staff mem uh, memo uh, with respect to chapter 674 weeds. Uh, everybody got the memo? Denise, would you like to say anything more about this? Or? Yeah, so I know that the, the, the uh, planning commission members had a subcommittee that met um, consisting of you, Frank, and, and Laura that had worked with Nadia and, and Catherine Zimmerman um, and try to flesh this out a little bit more after the last planning commission meeting in November. Um, and then uh, staff continued um, meeting with uh, Nadia to fine tune it uh, even more so, trying to, you know, meet what planning commission's goals were for it. Um, and then it, and it ended up, uh, Raven then ended up having another, I think when I was gone, had a couple more times with uh, Nadia uh, Malarkey about it. 
again, trying to fine tune it to bring it back to planning commission for tonight. Um, but Nadia then talked with a representative from Beyond Pesticides who just had a concern about it, raised the same concerns that planning commission had. And that was by requiring um, all of these invasive species to be removed we are also promoting that there's the potential to promote the use of pesticides. And that's, that really is not what Nadia's goal or the Catherine Zimmerman's goal or the environmental commission's goal in, in, in having this language. So I think, um, and Raven, you can add to that if you want. Uh, I think it's kind of just back to Nadia and possibly the environmental commission to see where they're gonna go from here. Uh, I don't have much to add beyond that. Uh, pretty much just a summary. Um, we need to rework it. Uh, there is, I suppose I could add that uh, Nadia is interested in uh, creating something that's more like policy, uh, like a brochure, uh, perhaps even an appendix similar to the stormwater management guidelines for low impact development that we did for the planning code. Um, so I think what I would like to do to start uh, getting back on track with that probably would be to call a meeting with the subcommittee, which consisted of Frank Doden and Laura Curlis, Nadia Malarkey, myself, and Denise. Okay. okay. Does that sound okay to you, Laura? Yes. And other members of the planning commission, does that sound reasonable? Okay, that yeah. sounds good. Okay, and then the other thing that we added to uh, the old business uh, was uh, about the parking minimums, is that right? Yes, Josue? Yes, uh, thank you, Frank. The, as you know, we presented the recommendation from Planning Commission to Council at the previous meeting. There was uh, some uh, pushback uh, from Council and, and tabled the, the, uh, the ordinance recommendation uh, for a later time. It's, it's been scheduled for a discussion at the upcoming council meeting on the 19th. Um, council, it's council's wishes to have further discussion on the matter. And so I wanna let commission know that um, they are, will be discussing the planning commission's recommendation to eliminate parking minimums in the downtown uh, area. Um, I've, uh, an, an invitation has been extended to planning commission uh, to join the discussion. And I, I apologize that I, I don't, I feel that uh, we didn't do uh, planning commission uh, justice and how thoroughly uh, planning commission has discussed this. Um, council didn't felt that they had been properly uh, informed of the dialogue, um, the conversation, the conversation that took place uh, planning commission. So this would be an opportunity for planning commission to uh, join council in the discussion and and um, present all the the insights that planning commission has a body uh, has developed on this matter. Okay. And over the weekend, uh, sort of as chair of planning commission, I wrote a brief letter, sort of uh, updating uh, council or to the to the village council, sort of uh, about our history of of when we've encountered the parking issues, particularly in, in B1 in the past and sort of the nature of the discussion to give a rationale for why we made the recommendation that we did. Okay. Did you get that letter, Jose? I did get the letter, Frank. I think it's a great letter. Um, okay. and, and, you know, as great as it is, I don't think it is a substitute for you or other members of planning okay. convention um, okay. to, to be present for the discussion. And could you uh, say the date of that meeting again? That is Tuesday the 19th at 7 p.m. Well, that's the meeting times at 7 p.m. It's on the agenda. I think uh, I don't have it in front of me, but we might get to it around um, um, 8, 8.30. Okay. Josue, could you say, uh, because I don't recall council having a discussion about any of the merits of the proposal um, what the concerns that uh, you might be aware of would be? 
Well, I think I think that's just it, Laura. That council did not have a discussion on it, and there was no briefing provided by uh, prior to the introduction of it at the previous council meeting. There was no briefing provided by by us or the council liaison you to planning commission on the discussion and um, the conflicts of parking minimum requirements in the downtown area. I thought didn't Denise didn't you uh, talk about it? Oh, well, it's been talked about a lot. I mean, it's been talked about at planning commission on multiple occasions, oh. um, but, um, and also was actually a recommendation in the comprehensive land use plan yeah. that it be considered. Um, it, uh, it just, you know, my, my, my report to council was very brief. I'm trying, I'm, I'm uh, definitely going back and I've added more to that. <laughs> okay. A little bit more, a little bit yeah. more. Um, I, yeah, I, was actually uh, off during that time, but I wanted to make sure that it got on because of the because the weeds ordinance was pulled. I didn't want to wait any longer on the parking okay. minimum, so I I brought I wanted to bring that, so I brought it to the January fourth meeting, um, and so um, but yeah, they, they were they didn't they seemed surprised and it, maybe I, I know I don't yeah. know I don't know why really okay uh, thank you okay yeah. all right. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's it for old business. Uh, go on to then uh, only item of new business is Home Inc. has submitted a letter requesting a one year extension for completion of the pocket of the pocket neighborhood development. I'll make a motion that we extend oh, well, it. Okay. For one Did year. you need to say anything, Denise, or? No, just that, you know, it, it, they've already broken ground. It's, yeah. just, it's really a formality because um, it's just the way the code reads that in, the construction either has to be complete or the commencement of the use needs to have already begun. And that's not the case um, by the time this uh, uh, conditional use expires. But they'll, the, they will have it done and in time with, if we give them that 12 month extension. Yes, we okay, will. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and uh, second Laura's motion. Uh, do we need, uh, Brianna, do we need to have a public hearing on this or? I, I don't believe so. It's an extension okay. of something that's already been approved okay. and okay. considered. And of course, Denise just went through why it's being requested. Um, so really, I don't know that you necessarily need a roll call vote. A voice vote would probably do, but I'll go well, ahead and do a roll call. Doden. Yeah, I, I like to have a roll call just since it's virtual. Since people, you know, we can we can you know, hide. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doden. Yes. Perlis. Yes. Green. Yes. Almond. Yes. Styles. Susan, you're on mute. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That takes care of that. I think uh, Thank gets you. us through everything. <laughs> uh, we're up to then uh, agenda planning. Uh, there is nothing that has come in so far. Uh, oh, okay. not, not yet. So we'll see. I'm sure there will be. <laughs> there will be. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. But, all right. Uh, anything else? I think that's pretty much gets us through the agenda for tonight. Very, very I, efficient meeting tonight, which is kind of nice. I have a question, uh, Frank. Um, yes. For public Wi-Fi, we're entering into the phase two of uh, installation of public Wi-Fi. I don't know if you would like me to come to Planning Commission and present on on uh, that project. We also are um, in planning for the active transportation plan and the safe routes to school. No, we don't. We don't break ground on those projects this year, but those are big projects that are coming up. I don't know if you uh, one of. Yeah, I would. I would certainly like to hear uh, you know uh, uh, reports on those things. Yeah, does everybody agree on that? You just nod. I'd yes. like to hear. It. So yeah, that'd be good. Okay, excellent. I'll plan for the next meeting. Okay. All right, uh, since we've run out of things to do, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I second. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you call the roll on adjournment, please? Oh, can't we all just say all in favor, say aye? All, all in favor, oh, everybody oh, wave. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, I'm oh. sorry, I'm sorry. You know what, we, we also didn't mention that council voted Sarah on as a permanent member to replace. Oh, oh, AJ. Yes. I'm so sorry, Sarah. Welcome, Welcome Sarah. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. You for tonight, but Sarah, yeah. there you are. Cause yes. I guess because you're at the last meeting, I didn't think about that. So. Yeah. And and Matthew was appointed alternate. I, I guess you guys cover that. Yeah. And they'll be officially sworn in on the 19th. And by the next meeting, we have to get Matthew so he's not sideways. Is he sideways? Yeah. On everybody yeah. Else's it's screen? making me dizzy. Yeah. Well, sideways on our screens, Matthew. I think that's his look for the January 2021. There we go. There you go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now you can adjourn. Oh, <laughs> it's over. I could have fixed it. Second from that season. Season. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Good night. Great Bye, meeting. Everyone. Great meeting, folks. Great Thank meeting. you. Before you go off.